Hey everyone, it's Mo Jax, not in the DJ City UK lab. As you may have noticed, I've gone to the beach because we are reviewing the Reloop Spin portable turntable. So it's the summertime, I thought. For this one, let's do the portable thing properly. The first thing I need to do, as always when I review turntable gear, is to apologise for my whack scratching. I'm just trying to show you how it works, so allow it please, and go and watch Reloop's own demo videos if you want to see some actual skills. The second thing to say about the Reloop spin itself is that this is surprisingly only the second turntable to hit the mass market which is designed for portableism. Up to now it's been either a Newmark PT-01 scratch or a regular portable with an external fader. There are at least a couple of other projects going on with people trying to make other portableist turntables, but in stores at the time of making this video, it's basically head to head between this and the PTO one scratch. With a street price of around $200, you can't go expecting miracles from the build of the spin. It's an all plastic belt drive turntable with the kind of plastic arm and ceramic stylus that you find on most other portables. That means it's never going to fulfill the dreams of people like me, who DJ with 45s and would love a dedicated high-end portable turntable, but something like that would cost a substantially higher price and is fundamentally a bit too niche to be a viable prospect. The design is incredibly reminiscent of the old Vestax handy tracks, especially with the lid on. Once you open it up, things are laid out a bit differently, but a lot of the main components are very similar. The tone arm is bent at the cartridge end and it rests in two places when not on the record, either on the little nub for temporary placement or down in a slot next to the platter. This slot incorporates the stylus guard and it holds the arm in place very securely whilst you're moving the spin around. As I already said, the cartridge and ceramic stylus are basic, but they are functional and the arm is fairly substantially weighted, so whilst not ideal for your precious vintage vinyl, it does hold the groove very well indeed. The platter is more solid than the PT-01 when it comes to up and down movement as you push down on the sides, which is nice. The top surface is a little grippy for my liking, and although it slips pretty well with the supplied Reloop slip mat, I found myself quickly switching that out for my preferred Butter Rug and Dr. Suzuki Donut combo. Being belt drive, of course the motor torque isn't on a par with direct drive turntables, but as I've always found on portables, it's plenty good enough, especially as you're working with 7 inch vinyl, which is much lighter than 12s. It's worth noting that the spin can actually actually play 12 inch records just fine, you're just not going to have a lot of joy scratching with them. I should also mention that you do get a 7 inch battle record included in the box to get you started, with skipless samples on one side and beats on the other which is a great touch. The producer Zukel actually sampled me saying the spin for the beginning of each side but rest assured Reloop don't get extra review points from me for that. The power system is the best I've seen on a portable to date. The spin requires 5 volt power, which means you can power it off any phone or tablet wall charger with a 2 amp or higher output. It would have been nice to get one in the box though. And yes, that allows you to use a USB power bank too, which depending on the size of it, can allow hours of use away from mains power. That's not all though, the battery compartment on the bottom has space for a pair of rechargeable 18650 batteries. You may not be familiar with those, but they're high power lithium ion cells widely used in vape devices, so easy to get hold of and I had a few knocking around to test with. Vape me, y'all. Even better is that plugging the spin into a wall charger or power bank actually charges those 18650s. I'm sure some people would have preferred a built in battery, which the spin doesn't have, but I really like the way that Reloop have done this. You can carry a couple of power banks or spare 18650s and never run out of juice, the choice is yours. Around the front you have an aux input for playing beats and the speaker, which although not the bassiest thing you'll ever hear, is notably louder than the one on the PT-01. On the other side is a Kensington lock slot, which will be important as I'm sure the spin will be bought in great numbers by schools and youth organisations. Then there's a USB port for recording, more on that later, both sizes of headphone jack and a master output on RCAs. Both the headphones and the master cut out the speaker when they're connected. Then you have the power switch and a micro USB port for the power, which I've already discussed. Moving on to the top panel, all the controls live on the right hand side. There's a start stop button, which is one of the first mods that people usually make on other tables. The main volume control is accompanied by the aux input level with a Bluetooth pairing button next to that. Having Bluetooth on here is fantastic. The best mod I did on my first PTO one scratch was adding the scratch toys sound plate, which gave me Bluetooth input. Pairing is simple and straightforward, and it means you can instantly connect pretty much any phone or tablet without the need for any cables. I've been running it constantly with a table beats app on my iPhone with zero hitches. 
There's a tone control which confused me at first, turning it counterclockwise reduces the bass, it's really more of a bass EQ than what I would typically expect from a tone control. It works absolutely fine though, just took me a minute to get my head around. I'm pleased to report it does only affect the record and not the aux in, which is what you really want. Above that are the speed controls with a choice of 33, 45 and 78 RPM. The pitch control is wide, offering plus and minus 20% in each direction. On my unit, the zero mark actually plays at almost plus 4% in Serato DJ Pro, with the upper and lower limits similarly impacted, but I've never known any similar portables to be especially accurate on that front, and that will probably change over time as the belt stretches. It's just something to be aware of if you use the spin for anything besides cutting. On a portable table, of course, the fader is hugely important, and the situation on the spin is pretty cool. It comes with a full-size 45mm twin rail fader, which can be placed into either of the two slots, whichever way round you like. So if you decide that you want it on the left, but hamster style, it's a two-minute job to swap it over and refit it that way. I'm sure some people would prefer an actual reverse switch, but for me this process is simple enough as long as you have a screwdriver to hand. Inside the two slots are identical pairs of connections, one red and one white. The white ones are used by the stock fader, and the red ones are to be used by third-party faders, making them equally easy to fit. There's even the potential to use an extra fader in the second slot as a line fader. I'll cover that when I look at third-party faders soon. The stock fader performs pretty well with a respectably sharp cut, but I do have one criticism. The cut-in distance is rather long. It's usable for sure, but I think a lot of users will quickly want to either swap in a third-party fader, or maybe be revived the old credit card mod which turntablists used to do back in the day but at least if you do decide to swap it out the process is dead simple and finally let's talk about the usb recording at this time the spin is selling for about twice the price of the pto1 scratch and for me the recording feature alone makes that absolutely worth it it's very simple you put in a fat 32 formatted stick and press record press it again to stop levels are all dependent on the spin's main controls and it only records at 192k mp3 but that is true truly worth its weight in gold, whether you're shooting videos or just want to hear your cuts back as you practice. A few weeks back I was in Prague with some colleagues and we decided to shoot some portable cuts on a pedal boat just for fun, but with a PTO on scratch it wasn't fun at all. We managed to sort out the power, but we didn't have the right cables to connect our phones for beats, and to record direct audio with the cables we had we would be cutting the speaker, so Ostralan, who was doing the scratching wouldn't be able to hear anything, and he wasn't comfortable anyway as the fader slot was on the wrong side for him. All of those problems would simply be non-existent on the spin. As much as I will forever give props to Newmark for the PTO on scratch, if I was buying a portableist table today, even though it costs more, this would be it. So there you go, my take on the spin from Reloop. There's no doubt this is a bit of a slam dunk for the company. The features on here, the power management, absolutely superb. The direct USB recording, my favorite feature. Bluetooth connectivity, all of that is really, really good. The one thing that lets it down ever so slightly is the cutting distance on that stock crossfader. It's just a hair too long. But of course, it's really simple to swap out for a third party replacement. And there are gonna be plenty of those available, I'm sure. There's already two out there. There is the one from Innerfader and the one from Jesse Dean Designs, both of which I have, and I'll be looking at here on the channel shortly. But in the meantime, if you want the latest and greatest in portableist tech, you want something that's affordable, you can get your hands on right now, the Reloop Spin is absolutely choice. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe and you hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. I'll see you soon.